Vamos a comenzar lección 2. Hoy vamos a repasar el verbo estar para hablar de condiciones, posesión, emociones y también vamos a repasar la forma de usted. Um, vamos a aprender o vamos a hacer una actividad de pronunciación con la U. Vamos a aprender la diferencia entre qué y cuál y descripciones físicas también. ¿Tienes preguntas de la primera lección? Uh, no, uh, pero um, tengo una pregunta uh, about a sentence structure. Ok. Um, so, I was asking my kids, like, what do you want to do today? So, I was saying, uh, ¿qué vamos a hacer hoy? But then when I looked it up, it adds an A. So, ¿qué vamos a hacer hoy? Why, sí. is there, why is there an A? So, um, this is what are we going to do today? Mm -hmm. And uh, typically, like what we were talking about yesterday is typically you put a conjugated verb back to back with the verb infinitive, right? Right. There are exceptions to that. <laughs> okay. So um, this is not so much a question of sentence structure, but rather the verb ir. Ir is almost always going to be followed by a, right? Oh. And so we would say boy, In, in the simplest form of it, voy a la playa. And this is like saying, I go to the beach. Okay. It's just one of those funky verbs that you do something different with. Well, um, the, the thing is, it's, it's not even necessarily the verb itself. It's, it's that it's used typically with this preposition a ah, which means to okay right prepositions are are very problematic they don't translate very well yeah so in this situation when we say boy a la playa it's like saying i go to the beach okay now um the the other use for the verb ir is plus an activity Uh, ir plus a plus an activity, and now we're in the future. This is this is technically called you know this is the simple future tense that we you've actually just asked about. Okay. Um, and so it's just a requirement of this particular you know thing. Voy a estudiar español. Okay. Got it. Gracias. De nada. Cool. Yeah, keep those questions coming. Those are good. Did you find out what your uh, what your question was yesterday? You were, no, you were... I, I I didn't ask my son about it yet. Um, okay. I did find the articles for you though, so I sent those. So when you I have to, I got those. Thank you so much. Okay. Good. I'll hopefully read them this weekend. Bien, pues vamos a comenzar con la U, okay? So the letter U in Spanish has a few interesting rules associated with it that you have to pay attention to. Um, typically speaking, it's just going to be pronounced like an U, right? Kind of that exaggerated O sound. U, like repeat after me. Cuba. Cuba. Uno. Uno. Mucho. Mucho. Muy bien. Now, if it's followed by a letter I or an A, uh, in particular, if there's a letter C in front of it and the letter I or A appear on the other side, <clears throat> it now produces our like W sound. Okay. So repeat after me. Cuidado. Cuidado. Cuando. Cuando. Okay. Uh, it will also produce that W sound if there's the two little dots 
on top of it. I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's actually from the German language. It was a, it's an influence from the German language. So repeat after me. Linguista. Linguista. Bilingue. Bilingue. Finally, uh, there are a few instances <clears throat> when it when it is silent, when you do not pronounce it. Uh, and it's if it comes in between the combinations of on the left side, the Q or the G, and on the right side, an E or an I. Okay. <laughs> so here we have, uh, repeat after me. K. K. Kin. Kin. Guerra. Guerra. Guia. Guia. So okay. it's a lot to keep in, in mind while you're while you're speaking, but you'll eventually get the hang of it. Is that is that in here somewhere? I don't see that in lesson two in the book. Uh, it should be. However, I do from time to time um, add things to the lessons that don't always get added to the book in real time. So no worries. Okay. Uh, here we have a little bit of a confusion between the words K and qual, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would say kind of nine out of 10 times, K means what and qual means which. Okay. But again, these are two different languages and they just don't use the words in the same way. So you kind of have to open yourself up to the idea that K and qual can both mean what in certain situations, right? Okay. So in these questions, it all, they mean the word what in English, right? Por ejemplo, ¿cuál es tu nombre? Uh, sorry, repita or answer? Answer. ¿Cuál uh, es tu nombre? Uh, mi nombre es Margaret. ¿Qué te gusta comer? Uh, me gusta uh, como... Oh, no, I don't conjugate that. Me gusta comer uh, ensalada. ¿Qué te gusta tomar? Uh, me gusta tomar agua. ¿A qué te dedicas? Uh, soy um, madre. ¿Qué te hace reír? Uh, ¿Qué quiere decir reír? Hmm, to laugh. Oh, uh, what makes me laugh? Uh, uh, mi hijos. By the way, you just used an expression that I didn't teach you, but you picked it up. Que quiere decir? That was very well said. Oh, thank you. It's an alternative to uh, que significa, right? So you got that, I guess, from your trip. From uh, Pimsler. Mm, from Pimsler. Okay, good. No, that's a good one. <laughs> All right, let's review the verb estar. Uh, yo estoy. Tu estás. Uh, el está. Nosotros estamos. Thank you. Uh, ellos están. All right. There are actually two verbs in the in the Spanish language that we can use to talk about states of being. Estar is the first one that we're learning, um, and it's typically used to describe what we call temporary states of being uh, that you can. Think about with this acronym of place, position, location, action, condition, and emotion. So let's talk about that a little bit. First, we have conditions, right? Like, how is the coffee? It's hot. That would be a condition, right? ¿Cómo está el café? Uh, el café está... Uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, caliente. Gracias. <laughs> ¿Cómo está el agua? El agua está fría. ¿Cómo está el agua? El agua está caliente. ¿Cómo estás después de comer? After he eats, uh, yo estoy muy, uh, is it lleno? You would change it to llena, right? Because you're full. Llena, full, right, okay. ¿Cómo está la caja? La caja está vacía. ¿Cómo está ella? Ella... Está cómoda. ¿Cómo está ella? <laughs> <laughs> That's me on a plane. Uh, ella está incómoda. ¿Cómo está tu carro? Mi carro está sucio. ¿Cómo está la ropa? La ropa está seca. 
¿Cómo están los perros? Uh, los perros están mojados. ¿Cómo está el señor? El señor está limpio. ¿Cómo está el monstruo de Frankenstein? Uh, él está vivo. ¿Cómo está la botella? Uh, la botella está uh, vacía. 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 ¿Cómo está la bolsa de dinero? Uh, la bolsa de dinero está... Uh, ¿Cómo se llama? Uh, lleno. Llena. Llena. Yeah. Good. You, you corrected yourself because we're talking about la bolsa. ¿Cómo está la pizarra? Uh, la pizarra está... Are you looking for empty? Uh, well, the white word wouldn't necessarily be empty, but maybe it would be clean. Oh, sí. Uh, la pizarra está uh, limpia. Oh, yeah. ¿Cómo está el perro? <laughs> el perro está uh, limpia, uh, sucio. ¿Cómo están el té y el café? El té y el café están uh, caliente. calientes. And you make me a plural, yeah? yeah? ¿Cómo están las cervezas? Las cervezas están frías. ¿Cómo está la muchacha? Uh, la muchacha está cómoda. ¿Cómo está el hombre? <laughs> I want one of those. El hombre está uh, incómodo. Muy bien. ¿Cómo está Buffalo Bill? Oh, Buffalo Bill está muerto. ¿Cómo estás? Uh, yo estoy uh, uh, vivo. Mm -hmm. And in your situation, you'd say viva. Oh, you do? Okay. As a female, yeah. ¿Cómo estamos nosotros? Uh, Nosotros estamos, uh, are you looking for wet? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Uh, I'm still learning that one. Let me see if I can find it in my brain. Uh, mo mojados? ¿Cómo están las flores? Las flores están, uh, no me acuerdo. Secas, dry. Okay. ¿Cómo te gusta la cerveza? Uh, sorry, am I adding adjectives or am I just saying me gusta la cerveza? Yeah, you would add, for example, me gusta la cerveza fría. Got it. Like I like cold beer, right? Okay. Uh, me gusta la cerveza fría. ¿Cómo te gusta el agua? Uh, me gusta el agua uh, fría. ¿Cómo te gusta el café? Uh, me gusta el café caliente. ¿Cómo te gusta tu casa? Uh, me gusta mi casa uh, uh, cómoda. ¿Cómo te gustan tus hijos? Me gusta mis hijos... Um, uh, felices. ¿Cómo te gusta tu cuenta bancaria? Cuenta, cuenta bancaria. Uh, ¿Qué significa bancaria? Bancaria es bank account. Cuenta. Oh, got it. Uh, me gusta mi, what I say, mi cuenta bancaria. Um, uh, llena. ¿Cómo te gusta estar? Estar. Uh, me gusta estar uh, feliz. ¿Cómo te gusta trabajar? Me gusta trabajar. Um, no sé, what would make sense there? At least I like to work happy. I like to work comfortably. Okay. Uh, me gusta trabajar 
incomodo uh, or comoda. What what am I describing there? In, in that situation, you're actually kind of kind of using it like an adverb, so it would be comodo. Okay. ¿Dónde están las llaves? Uh, las llaves están en la mesa. Okay, so for this this next activity, we're just going to practice a little bit of uh, vocab for the house and location around the house using this word in, uh, which in, uh, this is another example of a preposition. It can mean a few different things in English like in, on, or it. Okay. Okay. Uh, take a look here. Do you have any questions about any of this vocabulary? So we've got la sala, el comedor, el dormitorio, la cocina y el baño. Those are different rooms in the house. What's uh, el comedor? El comedor. So if you think about the verb comer, which means to eat, yeah. where do you eat? In the dining room. Dining room. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's see. La sala, that's the living room, right? Muy bien. Okay. La chimenea. Uh, la chimenea. Mm -hmm. Okay. La almohada is pillow. Almohada, muy bien. Um, don't, don't pronounce the H there. Almohada. 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 Uh, la, la cama? Uh, ¿qué, ¿Qué significa? The bed. The bed. Okay. Uh, y la manta? The blanket. In uh, la cocina, uh, ¿qué significa el horno? El horno, the oven. Okay. Latina. Y Latina? The bathtub. Okay. In... Oh, no say any of those. El inodoro is the toilet. Okay. La toalla is a towel, the towel. Oh, yeah, that one I know. Uh, and what about la poseta, seta? Well, those are just other words. Poseta is inodoro, it's the same. Like okay. in bañera is the same. Okay. Um, just regional, vari so this is where you really get into like the, the regional variations. Um, so it'd be interesting for you to find out how you say all of these in Costa Rica, because they might change. Some of these words might change in Costa Rica. Sí. Muy bien. Entonces, Margaret, ¿dónde está la televisión? Oh, uh, la televisión está en, uh, I just looked at it. Uh, la, it starts with a C, doesn't it? La sala. <laughs> la sala. ¿Dónde está la mesa? La mesa está en... I don't remember these yet. Uh, <laughs> uh, no sé. Está en el comedor. Comedor. OK. Comedor. El, it's male. El comedor, muy bien. Uh, ¿Dónde está la mesa? Es, OK. ¿Dónde está la cama? En... Uh, can you say uh, cuarto? Esta... El cuarto is really the generic word for room, any kind of room. Okay. Uh, Some, sometimes, you know, depending on the context, you might be able to use it to refer to it, but for the purpose of today, let's learn. Dormitorio. Okay. El dormitorio. Okay. Dormitorio. Okay. Donde esta el refrigerador? El... Refrigerador está Refrigerador. en... Say it again. Refrigerador. Refrigerador. Okay. Uh, está en uh, la cocina. ¿Dónde está la tina? La tina está en el baño. ¿Dónde está el sofá? El sofá está en la sala. ¿Dónde están las sillas? Las sillas están en... I got a cheat. El comedor. To eat, to eat, comedor. Muy bien. Uh, ¿Dónde están las almohadas? Almohadas. Uh, las almohadas están en el dorm, dormitorio. ¿Dónde están los gabinetes? 
Los gabinetes están en la cocina. ¿Dónde está el inodoro? El in inodoro está en el baño. ¿Dónde está la chimenea? La chimenea está en la sala. ¿Dónde están los platos? Los platos están en el comedor. ¿Dónde está la manta? Uh, la manta was blanket. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, la manta está en el dormitorio. ¿Dónde está el horno? Uh, el horno está en la cocina. ¿Dónde están las toallas? Las toallas están en el, uh, el baño. ¿Dónde estás? Uh, estoy en mi casa. ¿Dónde están tus padres? Mis padres están en California. ¿Dónde está tu casa? Uh, mi casa está en Centennial. ¿Dónde está tu trabajo? Uh, So what I say, yo estoy trabajo? No. No, no, because I'm asking where your job is. Oh, okay. Uh, mi trabajo está uh, en mi casa. Mm -hmm. I guess you could have said, yo estoy en mi trabajo, like I am at my job. It's okay. you work at, at home, right? But yeah. <laughs> ¿Dónde está el baño? El baño está... Uh, a la derecha. ¿Y dónde están tus llaves? Uh, mis uh, llaves están en, uh, uh, ¿cómo se dice? Mudroom. <laughs> Me there. I have no idea how, to, how you would say it in, uh, in Spanish. Uh, so you could just say, normally the mudroom is like next to the front door, right? Yeah. So I would just say, están cerca de la puerta, maybe. Okay. <laughs> uh, ¿Dónde está tu dinero? Uh, mi dinero está en... El, can you say el banco? Or do you have to say the whole... You can say that. Está okay. En el banco, maybe. Mm -hmm. okay. Uh, I was just thinking, you might be able to say, está en el portal. El portal... Uh, it's like the entryway for a house. So okay. that would be kind of like a mudroom, I guess. <laughs> they probably don't say mudroom often in uh, Latin America. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, fang fango is one word for mud, right? Uh, but yeah, to say el cuarto de fango, that would sound too little. Oh, no. like <laughs> would room, sound terrifying. <laughs> room made out of mud. <laughs> Which in certain parts of Latin America could be a very real, <laughs> real <laughs> thing. Uh, bien, ahora cambiando para hablar de emociones, ¿no? ¿Cómo estás? Uh, estoy muy bien. ¿Cómo están tus amigos? Uh, mis amigos están uh, contentos. ¿Cómo está tu casa? Uh, mi casa está uh, uh, limpio, limpia. Limpiar, muy bien. ¿Cómo está la calle hoy? Um, la calle hoy está... Uh, uh, ¿Vacía? ¿Cómo están tus padres? Uh, mis padres están um, contentos. ¿Cómo está el café de McDonald's? Uh, el café de McDonald's. McDonald's está um, incómodo. ¿Cómo están los novios? ¿Qué significa los novios? Uh, this would be like the couple, boyfriend and girlfriend, and because we combine them into this the the masculine form and the in the plural form. Okay. Uh, los novios están um, um, enamorados. ¿Cómo está tu gabinete de alcohol? Um, mi 
gabinete de alcohol está uh, vas, uh, is that male, female? Vas, vacío? El gabinete, muy bien, vacío. ¿Cómo está el presidente hoy? Uh, el presidente hoy está uh, mal. ¿Cómo está Elvis en tu opinión? Uh, Elvis está um, muerto. Okay. Well, our president is sick. I'm not, I'm not dogging our president, but he's sick. <laughs> está enfermo. Está enfermo. Sí. <laughs> I, I hadn't heard. I was, I was wondering what you meant by that, but I was like. Yeah, I don't do political stuff. <laughs> I would say the American president is just about always bad. <laughs> it's, it's curious, I don't, you know, not to get into a political discussion by any means, but um, have you ever seen like the before and after pictures of presidents? I don't know that I have, like a side by side. Mm -hmm. you, you, should, you should check it out. It's fascinating. They all look like they age about 30 years during. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. Can you imagine? If, if, and look at Clinton before and after, look at Bush before and after, look at Obama yeah. before. Biden's so old in the first place, you won't right. know. Right, <laughs> probably yeah. look the same. <laughs> but no, they all look incredibly different before and after. And of course, Trump doesn't look like a real person, so. Yeah, <laughs> I don't not think at all. Most, but, but just about any of the presidents, look at their before and after pictures. I'll do that, that's yeah. funny must be the worst job in the world. Yeah. Um, bien, cuéntenos de ti. Te voy a contar de mí. Yo vivo en Denver. Hablo con mis padres cada fin de semana. Enseño español y aprendo portugués. Escribo correos electrónicos todos los días a mis clientes. Recibo cheques en el correo. Me gusta comer comida cubana. También me gusta correr en el parque y caminar en las montañas. Sí. Margaret. Cuéntame de ti. Okay. Uh, can you, uh, ¿cómo se, uh, qué significa cuentan, cuentanos? Mm -hmm. Tell me about yourself. Okay. Uh, yo vivo en Centennial uh, y hablo con mis padres uh, cada fin de semana. Uh, estudio español y uh, aprendo español. Um, mm, no, uh, escribo correos electrónicos uh, con mis amigas. Uh, me gusta. A, a mis amigas. A mis amigas. Okay. Uh, ¿Por qué? Because there you're saying to my friends. Ah. And that's, that's what it is here. A right. mis clientes. Okay. A mis, mis amigas. Because you're not writing with your friends, you're writing to your friends. I imagine you're writing to your friends. You're not yeah. collectively writing an email together, right? <laughs> Correct. Okay. Um, me gusta uh, leer uh, cada día. Is that every day? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, también me gusta um, practicar uh, yoga. Perfecto. Muy bien. Anything in particular you want to learn how to say, Margaret? Remember, uh, the more you learn what you want to learn, the faster you'll be speaking. Um, no, I keep writing. I mean, I write stuff down and then I ask you at the beginning of class, but I don't think there's anything at the moment. Keep, keep doing that. That's a really good habit to get into. Uh, and I can't remember if we, if we talked about this during the first course but I, I usually teach a little kind of mini workshop on how to customize, like uh, how to write dialogues and then build vocabulary lists based off of those dialogues. Yes, we did do did a little of that, yeah. So if we did that, try to do that at least once a week and, okay. then, and then bring it to me just to make sure that everything's looking good there. Okay. Um, those dialogues, I find to, like you were just in Costa Rica, so now you have kind of an idea of the situations you're finding yourself in, right? Like yeah. the more you can write about those types of situations, just because what I'm teaching you, 
at the end of the day, you have to learn what I'm teaching you, right? This is a generalized program for everybody. Uh, I really focus on people that are learning Spanish for either work or for travel. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, the more you can think of situations where you're really going to be speaking Spanish, and like in this situation, it sounds like you practice with your kids, right? So yeah. you know, think, think about those dialogues that you would be having with your kids. Try, try and write that out at least once a week so that we can do together because it's, incredibly powerful. Um, I've got another student that uh, he's just started the, the next level right above you. Okay. But uh, he's, he's like you too. He's just brilliant. He's, he's picking this stuff up so fast. But uh, when, when I had him start doing the, he's, he's specifically learning for work and um, he, he does those dialogues all the time. And it's, it's impressive when, when, because I, uh, He's, he's using stuff that he shouldn't necessarily know at this point that I haven't taught him, but he's able to use it already. At, like he started, a great example was making small talk with his colleagues, right? Like, what do you talk about when you come in on Monday morning? How was your weekend? So great. I hadn't taught him the, the past tense. And one day he started using it with me. And I asked him how he had learned that because I hadn't taught it. And he said, I did the dialogues like you said, and I looked that up and that's how you said it. So I'm just that's trying cool. to get it out and he got it right. So it's okay. really powerful stuff. Awesome. Okay, read these examples to me for this new vocab. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm saying L.S. Ho Oven? Hoven? Uh-huh. Okay, and L.S. Uh, Viejo? El es fuerte, el es uh, débil, yo soy optimista, yo soy pesimista, el es alto, el es bajo. Perfecto. Okay, muy bien. So lesson number two for homework, Margaret. Okay. Uh, and we finished that super fast. So let me see here. We can keep going for a little bit. So oh, I just want to say um, regarding uh, uh, querer versus desear that in Costa Rica it's it's like the it's quiero or quieres or quiere. Like I've yet to see uh, deseo. Yeah, and and that's. A pretty common, I mean, querer is definitely used much more than desear is. Okay. Desear is typically used in much more formal situations. Um, so you might, you know, and it, it depends on the formal, formality of the place that you're in too, right? Sure. Uh, like being in a very large, like I lived in Buenos Aires and it was pretty common to hear that word, like when you're eating out at fancy restaurants and stuff like that, where they're trying okay. to eat extra formal, you know, yeah. uh, but in most day-to-day -day situations, you're going to use querer. Yeah, I was just, I was paying attention to it because I was trying to see what was used. I, I start with desear for a couple of reasons. Uh, one is it's an AR verb. Uh, sure. And two, it's a regular verb. And three, it's a cognate to desire, desear. So people tend to click with it almost instantly, right? So that's kind of my, my thought process behind that. Oh, um, I do have a question about the verb. Um, is it desir? So like, like, como se dice, right? So would the, would the, um, the yo form, would it be a diso? Digo. Digo. I knew it was a weird one. It's irregular. Okay. It's irregular. So Margaret, I'm gonna, for the rest of class, since we finished so early, I wanna go over back, this is that other book, um, you know, talking about kind of the dialogues and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. this is from the fourth easy step to speak Spanish with confidence. And this is good and, you know, going into the second level, super important for you to try to practice Spanish every, every chance you get. Um, so just, uh, to review, the first step was to have that journal that's all dedicated to your, your Spanish classes, right? Uh, yeah. So hopefully you still have that and you're still kind of filling that, 
<laughs> right? Um, the second step is to try your best to memorize at least 10 new words per day. Of course, while you're in class with me, that's no problem because I'm constantly giving you uh, new vocabulary. But to kind of tie that in with the first step, right? If you're doing those dialogues, if you're extracting vocabulary from those dialogues, you can, you know, not only learn the words I'm teaching you, but also start memorizing that personalized vocabulary. Uh, the third step I talk about enrolling in conversation classes, which you've already done with me. So um, now practice, 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 right? Uh, if, if you want to really, so you said that, you know, I was impressed when you said yesterday, you're starting to kind of be able to communicate in about 30% of your, your daily interactions with people while you are in Costa Rica, which is super impressive, just so you know, most Spanish teachers <laughs> would say that's not possible. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really <laughs> proud of you. That's amazing, right? Um, then here, a, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about something you already know, how to introduce yourself in Spanish, but steps two and three, right? How to find a Spanish speaker and good places to practice, okay? So as you already know, probably at this point, you don't have to master Spanish in order to start speaking it, right? If you live here in the Denver metro area, which you do, I don't know too much about Centennial, uh, so you might have to go a little bit farther north uh, to get into Denver, Aurora, but you are surrounded by Spanish speakers, even right here in the United States, right? So just start using what you know with them. And they don't have to be native Spanish speakers. If your kids are learning Spanish, <laughs> there you go. You've got conversation partners, right? Yeah. Um, now, <laughs> practicing with your kids will only get you so far, and I yes. don't always recommend family as good conversation partners, right? Uh, so one of the biggest, the greatest things that I can tell students at this particular level, Margaret, is start really trying to find an official conversation partner, right? Someone that's going to be like a mentor, somebody that knows you're learning, right? So isn't just like it's not necessarily someone that just speaks Spanish, right? But it's, right. it's going to be somebody supportive. And the way you can find people is to start asking around, right? Um, you work from home, you're just, ra you're raising your kids. So of course you can't ask around at work, but ask your family members who they know that's a, that's a native Spanish speaker. Uh, start asking your neighbors. I don't know if you have any neighbors. I, I, well, I have a question. So one of um, my son's best friends, I'm, I'm good friends with his mom and she's from, oh, she doesn't talk about it a lot. Columbia, maybe. Okay. Um, and it's interesting because she, her kids don't know Spanish. Like it's one of those, I, I find that that happens a lot with certain generations. Like they didn't see it as a good thing to teach their kids their native language. Um, but so she would, likely have like the the different like the the Spain uh I want to say she might have not from Colombia Latin you've got Latin American Spanish which is from Mexico all the way down to Argentina and then you have European Spanish which is just okay, I, have to, I have to ask her where she's from but so what okay what happens if she's from Spain and not like is she a good practice partner or no Sure. Anybody that speaks Spanish is a great pra practice partner, right? Okay. Um, I taught you yesterday about vosotros. That's basically the only difference, right? There's, there's certain pronunciation and accents and stuff like that, but I can go to Spain and talk to people and I can talk to people from Spain right here. No problem. Okay. It, that's yeah. <laughs> now, um, I, I would say to, to your point, is from a practical standpoint, here in Denver, you're most likely to talk to people from Mexico. Right. Or Central America. And then you travel to Costa Rica frequently. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. When you're trying to find a practice partner, I would say it would be helpful to look for a native Costa Rican, a Tico, right mm -hmm. here in Denver, and, and they're here. Uh, it, or, uh, you know, a Mexican or a Central American 
because that's what you're most likely to get exposed to right here. Okay. But if you have that connection with someone, if if your friend's parents are from Spain, sure. Now, it's it's really anybody that speaks Spanish, right? Okay. So, uh, and if you know you can't find somebody in your family or neighbors, go to a Mexican restaurant or you know, all over Denver, we've got Mexican restaurants, panaderias, nevarias, whatever. Go hang out there, ask somebody to practice with you, right? Okay. I lived in Argentina when I first moved to Argentina. I didn't know anybody, and it was really important for me to learn how to speak Spanish. So I just got really good, at, at least initially, at trying to go outside of my comfort zone and introduce myself to strangers. And I'm telling you, practically every day for my first three months while I was living there, I would go to a coffee shop, right, and invite somebody to, to drink a coffee with me and practice with these exact same questions. And in the afternoon or in the evening, I would go to a bar and ask somebody to have a beer with me. And, and again, these exact same questions. Uh, Hola, me llamo David. ¿Cómo te llamas? Soy de Estados Unidos. ¿De dónde eres? Estoy aprendiendo español, podemos practicar, right? Um, why the um, ap aprendiendo? Uh, I am learning. That's the progressive. That's the active progressive, right? So that's how we're actually going to learn that in this level. Okay. So ask these questions to me. Uh, hola, me llamo Margaret. ¿Cómo te llamas? Me llamo David. Un gusto. Uh, oh, mucho gusto. That's the other thing. Uh, Mucho gusto is used in Costa Rica is like, hey, thanks, uh, bye, you're welcome. Mucho sure. gusto. Yeah, so mucho gusto literally translates to much pleasure. Okay. So if you're hearing it outside of the context of somebody, you know, it's it's more versatile than just meeting somebody. Okay. Yeah, it's it's literally like the most heard phrase ever. In Pura uh, Vida, right? They say Pura yeah. Vida all the time. In pure, yeah, in Pura Vida. Pure life. Yeah, I love it. Okay. Um, Your impression, Costa Rica is a very happy place. It is a happy place. It's it's our happy place. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, did I say this already? Soy de Estados Unidos. ¿De dónde eres? Uh, yo soy de Estados Unidos también. Uh, estoy aprendiendo español. Uh, ¿Podemos practicar? Claro que sí. Right. Margaret, if you can memorize these and start just every time you hear somebody speaking Spanish, just get in the habit of saying these, it's going to help you out a lot, right? Okay. Now, to, to think about this kind of psychologically, right? The reason why this works so well is if, if you're thinking what most of my students are, which is you really want to learn how to speak Spanish, guess what? Spanish speakers here in Denver really want to learn how to speak English, right? Uh, again, uh, psychologically, if you're nervous about speaking Spanish with somebody, they're also nervous about speaking English with you. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I say it just, it's really helpful if you just start the conversation, right? By okay. introducing yourself, it breaks the ice. Yeah. If you, if you've ever found yourself standing in line and the per, you know, there's a couple of people behind you or in front of you that are speaking Spanish, and you're like, oh my god, I really here's my chance to practice, but right. nothing happens. It's it's psychologically, people are nervous about introducing themselves to people for the first time. They're they're nervous about rejection, but at the same time, most people are interested in meeting new people. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I totally, I'm, I'm an introvert and I'm shy. So this is this is a challenge for me. The, but. This, I mean, if, if that's the case, Margaret, it's, it's even harder, right? Because in, as an introvert, you're, you're shy about meeting people for the, in the first place, right? Even in your own language, even in your own culture. <laughs> Going into your second language, it multiplies that a lot. But the only way to get over that is to do it. Yeah. It, like you've always, probably most people talk about conquering a fear, right? The mm -hmm. only way to conquer your fear is to do it. If you're nervous about heights, go jump, go skydiving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
So same thing here. If you're nervous about meeting new people, just do it, right? Just do it. The worst that can happen, the worst that can happen here is that somebody says no. Sure. And then there they go. And in my experience, like I said, I did this almost daily for the first three months that I lived there, set multiple, multiple, multiple times a day. And I think somebody told me no less than five times. Okay out of hundreds of times of asking people. Right? Yeah, and I guess really, what does it matter? Like, I mean, yeah. people are naturally wired to, to help other people, right? It's mm -hmm. most, most people are, are have, even like bad guys, you know, if, <laughs> I once read a thing about <laughs> Al Capone, right? Like, did he think he was a bad guy? He didn't think he was a bad guy. He thought he was helping people out, right? Okay. Yeah. They're the worst people in the history of the world, but but in his mind, he was helping people make money and stuff like that, right? So, you know, we have that built into us. So like, especially this last one, you almost, I would almost recommend that you start with that, right? Estoy aprendiendo español, podemos platicar, because there you've just told the person why you're talking to them and right. you actually asked for help. And so, you know, even, even the very few people that told me no, Typically, it was because they were just busy, right? They didn't have right. the time to sit down. You know, you got to be in the right circumstance. Yeah. All right. So good places here in the Denver metro area where you can practice Spanish. Restaurants, right? And if you're at a restaurant, like a Mexican restaurant, which are all over the place, uh, try and just turn your server into your practice partner. Same okay. introduction here. Right. If you have a server, introduce yourself to the server. Tell her, him or her, that you want to practice. Right, and it'll make it. You know, introduce yourself. Ask the person for recommendations on what to eat, even if you know what you're going to eat. Right. Every time yeah. you go to the restaurant, you order tacos. That's not going to change. Go ahead and ask for a recommendation. Right. Just, just to make more conversation. Okay. Try to order your food in Spanish. Okay. Um. If you're going shopping at stores, uh, you know, like you certainly had this experience in Costa Rica mm -hmm. uh, where you're buying souvenirs or, you know, you, you mentioned the guy on the beach. I don't know if you went to a, like an official souvenir shop at all or anything like that, you know, but again, introduce yourself to the person that works at the store. And here in, in, in Denver, we have plenty of stores that are owned by Spanish speaking people, right? Mm -hmm. um, grocery stores, Latin, Latin American grocery stores that are right here, you know? Try and in those situations, again, introduce yourself, try to make small talk, ask people about music, sports and weather, right? Just to, just to make the conversation. And then as I mentioned, uh, one of my favorites, uh, my, my two favorite places when I was living in Argentina were, were bars and, and cafes to go to, right? Um, and, and, and I found those because those are social situations in the first place. You know, a lot of people go out to coffee shops to socialize with people. Virtually everybody that goes to a bar is there to, to, to socialize with somebody, right? Right. Uh, and I found it helpful to offer to buy somebody a drink, right? Whether right. you're at a coffee shop, you could buy somebody a, a coffee or, you know, at a bar, buy, offer to buy somebody a beer and it'll definitely help, <laughs> you know, who's gonna, yeah. who's gonna say no to that, right? Not me. Um, and then I have this book available. I don't know if you've gotten it, but this is my Let's Start Talking book. It's got over 500 conversation starters in both English and Spanish. Oh, cool. Can you put the, the link in the chat? Yeah. Uh, so the, the pages mirror each other. So on one side, you've got English and on the other side, you've got Spanish. Okay. And the, the reason for that is, uh, you know, I created that to help people practice. Um, mm -hmm. There's a, a, you know, you'll find yourself in these situations where, you um, you're, you've got a conversation started and then it gets to kind of that lull in the conversation. You don't know what else to say. Right. So uh, this book is especially helpful for that. <laughs>